Islam itself comes as witness because we always ask and we always want to say what Islam has done for me. And Islam has done for us a lot. To give us a direction, give us belief, give us give us many things as well. I don't want to go through the list because you know lots of people live off of Islam. But maybe a question ought to be asked, what have we given Islam lately? This Islam that we say is our deen. What have we really selflessly <coughs> given this deen? That we can go on the day of judgment and say, Ya Allah, we took a lot from your deen. But we gave just this or these things. Why do you think Allah says to the mother of Musa, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, wa awhayna ila umm Musa an ardi'i, which means we gave wahi to the mother of Musa, breastfeed him, when Musa was born. Why? Why? Why does Allah give special wahi to the mother of Musa to breastfeed Musa? Isn't that a natural instinct that Allah Ta'ala created in every mother to breastfeed her child? Anyway, why does that require such a lucky? It's not for you to give. It's for him to give. <coughs> what is he taking? What is Musa taking from this? Not just about you. The mother gets something by breastfeeding. But this is not about you or mother of Musa. This is about Musa as well. He needs to take. And you all know that the child only recognizes the mother by smell, by closeness. How will Musa recognize his mother if she's going to throw him in the river right away without her breastfeeding him? It's the breastfeeding was not as much for the mother of Musa here. The breastfeeding was more for Musa, so eventually he knows who his mother is, who he took from, so he can return to her, so he can deprive, he can reject all other breastfeeding, because he knows the smell of his mother. So he returns to his mother. That's the relationship of give and take. Because Musa recognizes his mother. There is give and take relationship here. The Quran recognizes those who strive on its path. Islam recognizes those who strive on its path. It's your life, my life. Allah gives us limited time. I'm not here to tell you that I would like to promote a feel-good religion so you come here for once a week to enjoy yourself, you go home. If you don't do something for the state, for you actually, eventually, you're not contributing. You're not contributing. And you're not part of the solution for the Ummah for sure. Feel-good is not going to do it. I don't care about your looks, you can look the way you look and you can add titles to yourself the way you like. Makes no difference. <laughs> Allah knows those who struggle and those who know are sabiri. And the woman has lots of needs today, more than ever. The woman has lots of needs from all of us to work and do good things. The Ummah and Islam is still searching for selfless people who will follow the footsteps of the Prophets in being the candles that illuminate the path for the rest of the world. Those who would actually live While we are enjoying these majalis, alhamdulillah, may Allah Ta'ala bless them and increase them. And give us from their barakah. And allow us to, for that barakah to nourish our souls 
So we can stand and follow the lines of the Anbiya of walking, not just being spectators. Of having that relationship with the Quran Al-Azim, with the Nabi Akram Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam, to have a mission in life, not to live like uh, other things. And that's why Allah says, Ta'amakum fi that He asked you to contribute. So I'm asking myself and you to contribute. I'm not asking you to contribute money. Money is the last thing I'll ever ask you, if I ever ask you. I'm asking you to contribute some of your life for the sake of this need. Actually for your sake, it's not for the sake of the need. He doesn't really need you or need me. We need that need. We live through the deen. Deen doesn't need us. The deen is a deen of Allah. You use and abuse this deen, you think there'll be prices to pay. And if you don't feel your pain, then you're the first victim of your own abuse. You betray your own judgment. But for us as an ummah to grow, we have to see what the objective of the ummah is. What is needed? What can we do? Where do we need to step? How do we get back to this where the Sahara one says, I know I can be patient, pass the water on to the next guy. And the next guy, they give him the water, he says, no, you know what, I can still stay patient, I can give more, give the water to the guy after me. Then they take the, the water to the man after him and he says, you know what, I can still give more. Even though I'm wounded, take the water to the man. And they go, the story goes that they went 12 people, every single one of those Sahaba, say, take, take a walk. And the man who's carrying the water, you know what, I can still give. Take it to the next one until they return to the first one and he died. And then they return to the next one and the next one died. And then they return to the third one, the third one had just died. And they return to the fourth one and the fourth one had just died. And until all of them have died. That separates people of principles who have who have not just lived giving but lived died giving. We just mentioned the Prophet ﷺ on the day of his departure he was giving. He never ceased giving. And even in South Africa, I know you still have a bigger community, meaning focused, more concentrated, unlike us in the West where the community is more spread. So there's presence felt more. That doesn't make you, you should not be fooled by that by not doing things, because that still makes you want to do things, and you should. Where is the role that I should do, and where can I give? Namelessly, facelessly, don't worry about that. Once people seek these things, you know what, that people are nameless and faceless, Allah knows their names, and Allah knows their faces. And the Malaika knows their, know their names. And the angels know their faces. Of course. And the Malaika know the names of the good people and they know the faces of the good people. Allah tells us that in Sahih Bukhari, Hadith, and others. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says that when Allah loves someone, He calls on the Jibreel. He says, Ya Jibreel, mi muhibu fila fulana fa'hibahu. Oh Jibreel, I love so and so, so love him. And Jibreel then Fayyad, Jibreel calls everything, everyone in heavens. Yani all the malaika of the of heavens. And he tells them, Allah loves so and so, so love him. All the people in the heavens love him. But the people on earth also accept him or earth accepts him. And that's why Allah says, when on the people of Pharaoh, that's why earth and heavens did not cry on the family of Pharaoh when he, when they died. As if earth and heavens were waiting to get rid of them. I don't want to see them anymore. They didn't cry. That can, the contrapositive meaning is what? That earth and heavens cry on the awliya of Allah when they leave. 
of those who do good. Inna al-malaikat al-hadith sahih tusalli ala muallimi nasi al-khayr. Al-malaikat themselves, they make salah on those who lead people to good. They lead people to good. Al-malaikat makes salah on them. Al-malaikat angels themselves make salah on those who lead people. And leading means not spectating. Leading is lead by example. Now you have an opportunity, inshallah, Allah Ta'ala gives us an opportunity to be of those istami'oon al-khayr wa ta'intabi'oon al-ahsana. And those who realize that ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna muhammadan rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam is not just a word, but it's actually a pledge that you give every single day before Allah. And we have lots of pledges to answer for. To Allah Azza wa Jalla. We've prayed so many times. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. We have to answer for these things. So we ask Allah Ta'ala to bless us with it, to guide us with it, to grant us also the vision with it, and to grant us something with it so that we can actually move in through this dunya and to the akhirah good ways so that we can follow the caravan of the Anbiya السلام and the caravan of the awliya عليهم السلام and that we can be among the salihin in this dunya we don't just say talk about the salihin that Allah makes us among the salihin and Allah Ta'ala makes us among the ulama al-alamin Allah Ta'ala makes us among the awliya there is a lot of work every region in this world has its different work but work doesn't stop and it stops only when, when you die that's when work stops but before you die, work doesn't stop. And uh, that's what we learn from all the Sahara of the Allah. I ask Allah Azza wa Jal to bless every single one of you and your families and your children and your grandchildren and your parents and your grandparents. And connect them all together and all of us together under the banner of Rasulullah. <laughs> That Allah Ta'ala, every single one of us here in this majlis, guides our hearts, Amen. guides our minds, Amen. guides our sight, Amen. guides our hearing, Amen. guides our touch, Amen. guides our minds. Amen. That Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala illuminates our ways in front of us. So that la that we don't get misguided and we don't misguide. And that Allah Ta'ala makes us hadeen and ahdeen. Guiding and that we guided and guiding. And Rahimin Marhumin. That Allah makes us also filled with mercy and merciful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, everyone of us who has any needs, grant it to us, Ya Rabbi Alameen. Fulfill all the needs. Heal all the sick. And Ya Allah grant every one of us the best in this dunya and akhirah. And make us always among around the salihin. Bring us around people who lead us to good. Bring us around people who guide us to good. Bring us around the people who remind us with Allah. Bring us around the people who remind us with Rasulullah. <laughs>